Ha! I fucked up the intro. Here we go. So no intro today because I was dicking around and uh, sliding into my seat right before the start of the show. So thank you for joining us live. If you are indeed live and if you can hear us out there in uh, television land. So welcome to episode 486 of the Kiss FAQ podcast. I'm your host, Julian Gill. We've got Daniel Wees representing the FAQ shirt. I like that. Uh, you're gonna get to go first today, just for wearing that shirt. I um, think that's that, that's your best shirt. That's the best one you've done. This one. What was that? Was that was my uh, my cousin's husband's uh, a newspaper artist? So I asked him to do a, a caricature ish type newspaper print illustration. Yeah, that was for the 2017 on tour, and he did a great job. He, you know, some people complained about the base, you know, pointing the wrong direction, and it's a newspaper caricature type picture of the band with artistic license allowed mm. you're not going to get exact relax people uh, also joining us is mark's almighty mark good to Greetings. see you mark uh lom lonnie st louis Lama. kiss <laughs> and the voice of reason ken uh today's Hello. episode is going to be death match we are into round two we only have one cup songs are just coming out of this cup now and going up against one another um in case where, where julian math will come into play daniel will correct me of course because that is what daniel does i'm um, a teacher well, god damn it you know <laughs> I have to yeah I, I, yeah you, you can't help it so no. a couple of things which is cool hard hardbacks of mask hysteria are currently sold out i did just get the first test print but it's a, it's a production print oh uh, which will be version two which is non-glossy super premium paper inside i'm super happy with it except the price well to me it has to stay the same for everyone if anyone is interested in the hardcover but i'm very happy with it also i just got another book and i'm gonna have tim on the show next week hopefully is ah. the second edition of unspooled tim derling uh is tim's vinyl confessions the podcast and it's all about eight tracks and it's got an intro by Martin Popoff. Um, lots of cross music stuff, a great section on Kiss. I, I wrote, a, I think, a, something about collector perspective um, for it. Uh, and it's on Amazon now. So I'm going to get him on the show to talk about 8-tracks, which should be super fun. And one last thing before we uh, get into one topic before we do the death match is uh, a friend managed to get a copy of Mask Hysteria to this guy. You may know him. And I just think that's super cool that a massive collector like Johnny Five now has a copy of the book. Um, so he's not pimping it for me. Just a friend gave him the copy of the book. Um, so very cool. I want to thank everyone for their support of the Mask Hysteria Project. It's uh, meant an absolute ton to me. I think I'm doing my final podcast appearance uh, next week uh, promoting it. So that's done and dusted. Next project. Um, other news this week. Amber Wilde to open for Kiss on the final leg of the End of the Road tour. Let's just go around. Opinions on that, Lonnie? Are you wild for Amber Wilde? Not really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you're honest. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I probably shouldn't. I, I, do it. Do it. I, I, I can't. I'm not going to. Am, am I going to get a phone call? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not going to say my real thoughts on it. I'm, I'm say your you oh, come, come on, come on. I don't, come on. I don't, I don't, like, it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I think it's dumb. I think that um, we're, we're, we're it, it's it's just another way to keep the money closer to closer to home. In my opinion, I, I don't like it at all. I think it's mm. nepotism at its finest, and you know, I I we're, we're just we're, we're just keeping more money to ourselves. I, I don't like it at all. Yeah. Absolutely um, correct. Yeah, and I, I'm not going to echo that because I, my attitude was neither thumbs up, thumbs down. It's just like, meh, so what? I, you know, I miss David Lee Roth when he opened for Kiss. I skipped the painter, uh, David Garibaldi. Uh, I think he's still in jail. I'm not sure. I'm sure he made bail by now. Um, in jail? Yeah, uh, what, what child, child, child support issues in California ah, ended him. Paying up. his money. Yeah, oh in, in the hoagie, nah. which is, is a shame. But, you know, I... I I sat there at Madison Square Garden for it um, and enjoyed it. There was some Angus Young, but, you know, once was enough for me. For But, again, they don't expect people to go to all these different shows. 
Yeah, they do, but they don't care. Um, Amber Wilde. I immediately searched, and all I saw was a 30-second clip of... Yeah. That didn't give me any taste of what it was. And didn't he have something alternate wave? He's done a Maroon 5 cover. That's that's points off right there. Um, God. <laughs> e even if it had, you know, uh, Brian Cranston in it, uh, who I've never watched an episode of Breaking Bad. Um, so oh I don't I don't give a fuck, to be perfectly honest. I'm more likely to be hanging out with friends while the opening act does whatever the opening <laughs> act is, is going to do. So it, it literally could be anyone. There have been very few shows I've actually looked forward to the opening act. Judas Priest opening for Deep Purple. Oh yeah. Oh I like I like that opening act. <laughs> um but it but again, you know, end of the road, whatever at this point. Uh, it was never yeah. gonna be something like cheap trick. Mark. Oh. Yeah, I'm I'm more alarmed by the, by the fact that you haven't seen a single episode of of a you know Breaking Bad. That that to me is more alarming. But uh, I I don't understand this. I mean, I I echo Lonnie's comments about it being unexciting, being completely stupid in my opinion. Because like he said, I mean, talk about you know trying to keep the money close at hand. That's that's a really great way to do. It. Bring your son and you know. Has this son's band even done anything? I mean, you know no. how many bands could could actually be worth bringing on the road that have actually done something decent and that deserve a break and could you know benefit from going on a tour like this? And instead, you bring your son's band, who's probably hasn't done dick all compared to a lot of other bands that are out there, and you and you feel some reason that he's justified to come and open a, a major tour like that. I think it's completely nonsense. Okay, um, I'm I'm gonna go to Ken and let Daniel have the final word on this topic. <clears throat> well, first of all, well, first of all, <clears throat> Andrew was just asking me, what's the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Kiss Army flag behind me? Actually, that is a one of a kind, uh, I call it a prototype because <laughs> what it is, is it's a hook rug. If you ever know what a hook rug is, well, it's a well, like crochet. Hook a rug? It's kind of a crochet kind of thing. You have a little hook thing. A rug? You have little bits of yarn about that long, and you have this little tool, and you have this mesh thing, and you have to put all. Oh these yeah, little, they used to sell stuff. kits for shit that you could. Like, the kits. It, it was very that. popular yeah. in the eighties. Uh, Don't say like little tool. Eighties. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, it's it's hand hand designed actually. Shadow. Shadow. So, so anyway, that's what it is. It's a one of a kind. It's actually a, a rug, you know, yarn. It's rug. It looks. It came out pretty good. Um, Way to change wise. the subject. So anyway, yeah. yeah. Going back to the question, um, yeah. Uh, did they, what's their hit? Amber Wilde's hit. Uh, did they have a hit? Uh, I guess not. What's, what's uh, their song? You know, uh, yeah, what's you listen what's to even a song? Show? Yeah, I, I just I think that's a cheap way of getting an opening act instead of bringing in somebody that's maybe more related related to kiss and the kiss audience uh even you know i know they don't want to do it but you know bruce kulik for instance you know oh god or something you know something more related to kiss with it being kind of the celebration of kiss the last couple of shows so uh, i don't know it's 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 yeah, it's ridiculous in my opinion. What album was voted? Was it classic rock or louder sound? The most overlooked '90s rock, hard rock album, Union. Yeah. Um, I was I mean, listening to that album yesterday because of that article popping up. Right. Holy shit! A reun a Union reunion. I know John's back with uh, Dead Daisy. I don't know what they have going on, but even if it was you know Union with John, obviously uh, Brent. Um, I don't know what Jamie's up to these days, or even the Bruce Kulick band. I mean, you just think about all the things that Kiss fans want, and it's no longer we hear and we obey. It's put up, shut up, and pay up. Um, no, and and again, I, I I don't care about the nepotism angle. It's just that there's no music to judge the kid by. I heard some of his stuff way back when he was young. Uh, I think it was Jupiter or something. I can't remember. And it was some pretty cool hard rocking stuff. The guy has chops. No doubt about it. He's a very talented musician. But when you're covering Maroon 5, you're lacking credibility. Um, Talent isn't everything. Yeah. Take, take us out of this topic. 
yeah. <laughs> finally, finally. <laughs> uh, I don't. I know Julian has kids. I don't know if anyone else has kids, but I do understand Paul. You know, it doesn't really matter. He can give his son a chance, a shot at making it, and I do like the short clip that have surfaced from from his uh, performance there. I think Paul filmed some. Uh, he looked kind of cool. Uh, his, his son there. On the other hand, if I was the son, I would never accept it. You know, <laughs> riding the coattail of your father, you know, exactly. I would not I would say no way I can open for you, dad. I have to make it on my own. So I think the problem is not Paul offering his son the spot. The problem is the son accepting the spot. Yeah. I think he should have turned it down. Good point. I don't think that's an issue. I think there's enough offspring of kids. Uh, Brad Whitford's son has done stuff. Um, Joe Perry's sons have do done stuff. I think Cheap Trick has one of the, the sons involved. Um, Danny Harrison. I mean, there, there's pretty much an um, Dylan. But, but they're playing with their but they're, but they're playing with the bands, though, aren't they? Like they're within the band. Aren't I, they? I I don't know. I think the, the whole debate on nepotism mm -hmm. becomes a very dangerous, and I can see why Lonnie might have been uncomfortable going there because it, it seems to you know it covers a broad spectrum, you know. So giving your kid a leg up, um, yeah, I, I you know, it isn't necessarily wrong. But yeah. is there a, a justification for him to be given that leg up where there's no albums yet? Is I think more yeah, I, my point. If he had an album. And something to present to people before, you know, saying this may be the opening act. And who knows? Paul may just be teasing and playing with our minds. I mean, Paul loves to uh, to trigger fans. So congratulations. All right. Let's get into today's death match because we got a lot of songs to get through. Cool. And go. Did you just tell cool. me to I shut up and cool. go? I, I said, cool. <laughs> go. All right. Here, go. Here, here we go. go. Who, Enough of these. That. Who are these people? We are parasites. Oh, Lord. Uh oh, that's a good one. Actually, I can uh, just pull these out of the hat while we go and write them down afterwards. Uh, Daniel gets to go first, like I said. All right. Parasite up against. Holy shit, this is getting ugly already. I want you. Mm. Oh, my. And Daniel, oh. straight to you, your decision. Yep. To. Of the greatest songs from the 70s in my mind um i always liked i want you uh, you know uh, it's a hard rocking song from paul one of my favorites of rock and roll over on the other hand i think parasite might be my favorite a song of all time and me and mark did an episode on guitar riffs and parasite was up there you know there's plenty of great guitar riffs in in parasite i just wished ace would have sung it because it's really his song it's 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 uh you know new york early 70s ace is uh it's it's almost autobiographical autobiograph how the fuck do you say that Aut autobiographic autobiographical. yeah thank you you americans and canadians <laughs> that's a hard word for a, a scandinavian to pronounce okay so uh I, I just wish ace would have sung those early songs however i still put parasite in first place over I want you, mm. even though both songs are 10 out of 10s, but I'm not sure Parasite will make it through anyway, but but, but my vote goes to Parasite. Ken? Yeah, this is a tough one. Um, I'm going to go with I Want You on that. Um, that's kind of the first song I heard off of that Rock and Roll Over uh, when it got me hooked, so I got to give it to that. Uh, give props to I Want You. Though, you know, Parasite is a classic. <clears throat> But uh, I want you, I'd rather listen to you right now over a Parasite. All right, Lonnie. They're both really good songs. There's no argument about that whatsoever. Um, but I give the edge to Parasite. I think I, I'm with Daniel. I love the riff. Um, I think it's just a, a fun fun kiss song. I, it's, one, it's one of my favorites. So I it's, it's tough, but it... I'm giving the edge of the parasite. All right. This is getting tough, Mark. 
Okay, well, this is not really tough for me. I mean, like you said, it's 10 out of 10 both songs. No no question about it. But, and, and this is not going to be any big surprise here, but after the complete disaster that Destroyer was, to put on <laughs> rock and roll over and to hear yeah, the he beginning, the, chance, the beautiful <laughs> music that was I Want You coming out of the speakers saying, ah, Kiss is back now. No more of that crap that Ezrin was doing on the records before. Back to the more raw sounding, fantastic playing. You know, th that 12 string at the top is just fantastic. I mean, Paul's re referred back to that sound a few times. You know, even his solo record, he used that sound. And the guitar solo is great in that song. His singing is great. P Peter's drums are fantastically booming in that. And while Parasite is a great song, I'll never put Parasite down. Like I said, like Daniel said, we even played it on the episode that we did together. It's a great song. But to me, I'll always have a special place in my heart for I Want You to clarify the garbage that was in people's minds after Destroyer was put out by this fantastic song in that album. Okay. So Parasite. come on now, Julian. I come want on, you. Julian. I know Julian. I've got I've got I've got to do the tiebreaker, and this yeah. is heartbreaking because I want you is absolutely majestic with that, you know, instrumental in introduction um, into the power and bombast of everything that Mark's talking about of making a declaration that we are a hard rock band, not a studio concoction again. Um, but Parasite is just so badass in its representation of that early kiss attitude that comes across so perfectly on Alive and the breakdowns in it, the guitar work, the aggression. Um, I think Andrew said Ace is was a punk and this is street and this is early kiss. This is black leather, not um, costume crusaders transforming into I'm going Parasite. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Ah. Cool. <laughs> All right, Parasite, sir. I want you, and that hurt. That hurt. That was yeah, like that was, that was like stub. That was like stubbing my toe. That was the hardest <laughs> one so far. <clears throat> yeah. Tough. All right. So next up, Baby Driver. <laughs> Against nothing can keep me from you. <laughs> I want this to go through. I love this song, and it's been on TV recently on America's uh, Funniest Home Videos or. Oh, this is this is an interesting matchup: Seduction of the Innocent versus Baby Driver. Mark, get us started on that one. <laughs> well, let me refer back to what I just said before. Okay, Rock and Roll Over, great album. Okay, love it. Everything on that record, I pretty much I I love. I mean, Baby Driver is such a such a simple song by Peter. There, I mean. Well, maybe by the band, but him singing it. It's a, it's a really simple song. And I've never been much for Carnival of Souls. I, I always thought that that album was a complete miss. Uh, you know, once again, Kiss trying to chase trends, doing it badly, of course. And I, I, I don't know how this song got through, to be quite honest. That's why when you just mentioned it now, I'm like, really? We voted that song in? That's a complete crap, that song. You know? But so... Enough. It's it's going to be obvious to me that I'm going to pick Baby Driver for sure. All right, we're off to a good uh, good start for the Cat Man, Ken. Yes, um, <laughs> Baby Driver for me. Um, I you know I I love Seduction of the Innocent. I think that's one of the my you know more favorite tunes on on Carnival Souls. But that that's not a real Kiss type sound and record. Um, compared to rock and roll over. So baby driver. I love it. I love Peter's vocals on that. It's a great song. All right, Lonnie. Yeah. I mean, I think it's going to be pretty easy for us to choose which one we do. Well, I like seduction of the innocent. I mean, baby driver is just classic kiss has a classic kiss feel. Rapsy Peter Chris voice. It's it two very different songs from the same band, yeah. <laughs> but it, it's, it's definitely baby driver. It's just, has that that classic Kiss seventies feel to it, hundred percent. All right, Daniel. I do enjoy the the lyrics on Seduction of the Innocent, but uh, you know the sound is a bit off. It doesn't sound like Kiss, and uh, Baby Driver is one of 
Peter's best vocals ever, I think. Uh, I love how, how he's belting out the chorus. So I have to go Baby Driver. All right. So um, just to make it clear, I'm unanimous on that. There's something about Seduction of the Innocent. Crispiness, thank you for that comment. Pull it back up. Um, yeah, there's probably certain amount of it comes from Rock and Roll Over, which to many people is Kiss's finest makeup album. Um, not everyone. Please note that I did say, but seduction of this of the innocent has great lyrics, um, but it's got a really annoying percussive, like detuned yeah. boing um, <laughs> that just sits uncomfortable. Mark, what the f hell would trying, that be? Uh, trying too hard. I don't know. It's some kind of odd percussion. I I'm, I I never really even knew what that was. It, I mean, it's, it's it's like an untuned kettle drum or something. Yeah. It's, you know that that the skin's not tight enough, and it's just boring. Because you know the funny thing is, for a longest time, whenever I used to read these drum magazines, and they would say, you know, I tune my snare drum to G, or I tune this to that. I was thinking to myself, really, you tune drums like to an actual note? And you know what? There is an actual art to doing that. For the longest time, I was never aware of that. So it could be one of those things, Julian. You could have just struck upon it that maybe it was a percussion that was added in there that was that the note was, you know clashing with the surrounding notes that it was playing with so it's very possible that that's what it was all right baby driver is through unanimously next song up sex next song. yeah yeah next song <laughs> matchup is little caesar oh while well, we're going the drummer the drummers of kiss versus gene simmons <laughs> nope against paul stanley easy as it seems versus little caesar lonnie get us started <clears throat> Easy as it seems, I guess. I, I'm not. I'm not in love with either song. No. Um, it's. It's again. It's kind of crazy that I, I get it, these matches are going to get harder and harder. Got it. And some of these songs came in here because there's more songs on one album than another. It's kind of even weird that we're talking about these two songs against one another. Um, I'm not a big fan of either one, but easy as it seems is better than Little, Little Caesar. Um, there's so many crappy songs on Hot in the Shade, so it's definitely easy as it seems. All right, Daniel. Yeah, I'll, I'll second Lonnie. None of these songs will get any, you know, love in the. Uh, I think that they might. The one that makes it through will will go out in the next round, but I'll go with Easy as, as it seems. I like that, that positive thinking. <laughs> it's it's realistic, die. you know. It's realistic thinking. It's not negative. It's the truth. <laughs> All right, Ken. Yeah, easy as it seems for me. Um, Little Caesar never. I mean, while I enjoy, you know, them giving Eric Carr, you know, finally a song to sing. Um, should have been a lot earlier than that, obviously. But uh, uh, it's not as good as easy as it seems. Yeah, Mark. Yeah, it only took Kiss forever to give him a vocal, typical Kiss. Uh, but you know, easy as it seems, I've it's not the strongest song off on Mass, but I, it, like I said, throughout the years, this album has really, really grown on me. And in fact, it's funny that you mentioned this song because at three o'clock in the morning last night, I woke up for some reason and I for some reason went on to Kiss the Kiss Online store at that time my phone, which is a mistake to do in the middle of the night when you're half asleep. And I ended up buying myself a Kiss Unmasked t-shirt last night in the middle of the night. I don't know why I did that, but <laughs> I bought an Unmasked t-shirt. So, so my so my <laughs> vote is going for easy as it seems. Uh, the power which, of the unmasked is among me. Here, which so. t-shirt is it? Is it the one with it's the album Gina cover. Paul? Okay, no, it's, 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 it's yeah, a not the, no, not the Gina Paul one. Come on, that's blasphemy, that one. I like that one with the Japanese writing and all stuff. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm easy, easy as it seems, which I actually love. I think it's got a, a really good swing to it. Um, it straddles a couple of musical good, genres good that makes album. it unexpected. Um, Little That's Caesar, Eric Carr had so many good songs, in my opinion, at that time, and they made him sing the weakest of what he brought to the table. Yeah, um, and Agreed. that is just hmm. very, very sad. Um, but isn't that I, like Kiss though? Think about that. Can yeah, you imagine yeah. Paul and Paul? Paul. Saying, we're gonna Paul's just, we're gonna just take his Paul's best Paul. song and put it yeah. on this album with with it's it's, with, it, with a chance so, of it being better so than cool. my song. You know, go listen okay. to the vault. There's your answer on that too. Yeah, 
Same, yeah. yeah, same same with Gene. A lot of his weaker songs uh, or better songs didn't end up. All right, so next matchup is Yes, I Know, Nobody's Perfect mm -hmm. versus Not Going in Through the, In the Mirror. Can't oh. <laughs> Another done, done again. In the Mirror? <laughs> oh, God. Nobody's Perfect by a mile for me. Uh, oh, in the I, I do not like In the Mirror. I think it's horrible. In my opinion. It's not. It's not. It's horrible. <laughs> no way. No way. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's it. Best Solid. song in Carnival Souls. Daniel, uh, no. you know, you know, me and you are we're we're on the same wavelength, my friend. We we think most alike. Of the time, most we of we, time. we are very. But... We're almost like brothers from different mothers. Okay. Yeah. But but I have to say that in this situation. I have to go with yes i know nobody's perfect because i i always loved that song when it came out on the album and i'm not a big fan of in the mirror i understand you like that song and i appreciate and respect that my friend so don't take it take, don't take it too hard <laughs> I, I suppose i suppose Mar um daniel has to go next yeah daniel. at least we have to give one vote for in the mirror i mean if you listen closely you'll see the similarities to Paul Stanley's songs from Dress to Kill. Uh, In the Mirror is the only song on uh, Carnival Souls that has, has a catchy riff. Mm. You know, I know Hate is a great song, but, but the, the catchiest riff on the album is the one on In the Mirror, and it's very similar to uh, Lover All I Can. I guess that's why I liked it. Uh, and I like the drums. Right it feels like a rock and roll song. While most of the other songs, like Selection of the Innocent, that we talked about previously, sounds kind of strange and off. Take a look in the mirror, it's classic kiss. It should move on to the next round, but I don't know what this, these geezers will do. They will, give, <laughs> they, 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 will, they, will, they will make a mistake. You guys, well, it, it, there, it's you going know. to Lonnie next. So, Lonnie, you're going to be a dream that was breaker. A little, little. Yeah, I am, because I, I really. I've talked about um, Yes, I Know many times on the show and how much I really oh, like that song. It's my favorite song off of Sonic Boom. So it's an easy choice for me, actually. Yes, I Know is one of the better songs they've put out, I think, in the last 20-something years. So mm. it's it's an easy pick for me. Yeah. Well, for for me, pick. Yes, I Know, Nobody's Perfect would have been great on a 1986 album since it's, it's from that era originally. Sure. Um, uh, the recycling you know was part of what made sonic boom great but i immediately had that riff from in in the mirror pop into my head and there aren't a lot of riffs on carnival cells that really jump out at me so it, it's it's actually a much tougher one and i'm gonna go in the mirror because my vote doesn't count <laughs> thank you uh because i i because that riff jumped into my head yes that, it's that, a great that song that song's got something about it and mm -hmm. yes, I know. I just kind of uh, recycle. So just yeah. off that response, I'm going mirror. All right. So oh, give me a second. So mirror lost, right? Yeah. Yeah. Mirror, mirror lost. <laughs> we'll get that piece of shit next round. Come on, it's Carnival of <laughs> Wow. I, I, the I, I Jesus I, shit song. Jeez. God damn it. I don't see any Carnival of Soul songs <laughs> going deep into this. All right, here we go. Plaster Caster. Ooh. Yeah. Versus hard times. Mm. Ooh, that's it. I, I don't that's... like this matchup at all, and I get to go first. Um, I like those songs. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I'm going plaster, and no, I'm not. I'm going fucking hard times. Hard times, because both of them are really good songs. <clears throat> this sucks. I don't like this game anymore. No. I quit. Mm. Um, <laughs> It, it's so hard to choose between yeah. either of them because they're just so rooted. But I, again, the same reason I voted for Parasite, it's Ace Frehley's Street coming across mm. versus something that's a concoction um, of other people's activities and memories. So, uh, Daniel. Yeah, Mark always talked, talks about uh, the first album and Unmasked being kind of you know street albums uh and um i do like ace's contributions on unmasked uh, it's dynasty. Gene, uh yeah it's a dynasty yeah I, yeah dynasty. Uh, yeah 
yeah hard times is some diners that's true yeah uh but hard times is way better than plastic caster i think plastic caster you know the whole content of the song is so silly so i can't really get into it and i do not understand why they use it so much on the unplugged tour i didn't think it worked there but it's a fun song but hard times is way better in my mind all right daniel's hard times lonnie mm, it's tough this is two very good 70s kiss style songs both kind of underrated songs in my opinion too i think they're both really good that mm -hmm. don't get the love maybe they deserve um but i'm gonna go plaster caster i really like plaster caster even though i really like hard times it's it's really tough but i'm gonna go plaster caster all right ken plaster caster it's you know it's almost <laughs> a tie really but uh i i just love plaster caster i mean hard times i played like crazy on my 45 single when i got i was made for loving you i played it more than i was made for loving so but uh <laughs> They're they're really close, but I love I love to hear anytime I hear Plaster Caster, just I just enjoy that song a lot, you know, immensely. So Plaster Caster for me. All right, Mark, break the tie. Well, Daniel touched on something that's very important to me, and that is the feel of a record <laughs> overall. And like I said before, a thousand <laughs> times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, Rebecca. I I think we're going to be getting to that in a second. Uh, that uh, Hard Times is one of those songs, again, that represents the true vibe of that record, the New York City vibe. Ace really, really did a good job in capturing that in that song. And while Plastic Caster is an okay song, it gets minus two points for me for one reason. I can't stand songs that lyrically are false. Gene Simmons never got done by the plaster caster girls at all. So I don't know why the hell he was singing about it like he did because he never got done by them. So that's complete bullshit by him, which is not surprising by Gene to be lying like that. But, you know, uh, but that, that in itself makes me not want to vote for it because I, I hate it when people bullshit in their lyrics like that. So I have to go with uh, hard times for sure. So I'll <laughs> She's killing it in the chat today. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Plaster Caster didn't get hard in this episode. All right. Moving on. <laughs> All right. So they'll never do Black Diamond again because that's not true either. And 100,000 Years is out of the set list. All right, Mr. Simmons. We got Love Gun coming up here today. Christine 16. Is How can you against... put those in the same category? They're not. He says he's. Gene was trying to imply that he was that he was done by those girls. There. No, he wasn't. He was just impressed by the concept. Oh no, he wasn't. Right. All right, Christine, sixteen versus. I'm a legend tonight. Hmm. Hmm. And this one starts with Daniel, please. Uh, Christine, sixteen, a classic Kiss song. I'm a legend tonight. Never got the love from the band that it needed in order to make it a classic. However, I do enjoy all the songs on Kiss Killers, the new songs, and I'm a legend tonight. Might not be the best one on the album, but I think I'll, I'll, I'll vote for that one because uh, I love the way Paul turned it around after that disaster that is the elder. So I think this was uh, a step in the right direction in order to create creatures, lick it up, and so on. So uh, for me... I got Kiss Killers pretty early on in my Kiss fandom, and this was a song that I enjoyed right off the bat. So I'll, I'll go with the Kiss Killers song. I guess I'm yeah. the only one. Yeah, I doubt if if I get there. I mean, there's something about "I Want You" with its start and then kicking into a bigger song. I'm a legend tonight. Kind of follows that. Um, tonight you belong to me, Mark. You know what? I have to completely echo everything that daniel just said i got into killers pretty early as well in my kiss thing collecting and all that stuff uh and i really like those songs i think that those studio songs were really good and i had to echo with him saying that they didn't get the proper push that they needed to make them you know the same status as some of these other songs 
And, you know, Christine 16 is okay, but, you know, again, it and, and I know I can see Lonnie rolling his eyes when I say this, but uh, having the piano in there just irks back to Ezrin, in my opinion. It's just give me a break with the fucking pianos. Like, come on. You know, so. Uh, what about I, I, Bruce Foster, first album, Nothing to Lose? Come yeah. on. That's, that's right. There the is album. piano there. Yeah, but Same. that's not. That's still. It's, I, I don't. I don't like the Jerry piano. Lee rock and roll triads. Nah, Jerry Lee married his cousin. I don't like that guy. Uh, so, um, <laughs> Great balls. Yeah, she, she was thir thirteen. As she well. was thirteen. Yeah. Oh, so there you go. That has, that has connection to Christine, sixteen underage yeah. girls there. Yeah. So maybe maybe that maybe that's why he did the piano. Maybe he was thinking of Jerry Lee there. Uh, maybe she, so, maybe she's uh, thinking about pounding. Yeah. Well, let's not go down that road there with that. Okay, we, we are a live stream here, so we could get cut off here. Um, I'm, I'm going to go, though, with I I'm a Legend Tonight. Uh, I, I definitely love that song. I think Dine Daniel's right that Paul definitely, <laughs> definitely went a good direction with this song after The Elder and kind of redeemed himself in that, in my opinion there. So I'm going with that song. What song? I'm a Legend Tonight. Okay, just making, just making sure. <laughs> What are you yeah, doing? Yeah. Sewing out all the time. <laughs> well, you know, you know what I've already, you know what I've already done. No, I've already thrown in the mirror in the, the wrong cup. It was going to go through. <laughs> oh my god! Uh -oh. That's why we're. That's why we're like, how did these songs make it? <laughs> right here. All right, Lottie. Um, I'm going Christine sixteen. I like Christine mm. sixteen. Um. I'm a legend tonight's good song. It's fun, but Christine 16 is just so classic kiss to me that I can't vote against it in this matchup. It's, you know, I mean, I was listening. I mean, I had, I've told the story on the phone, on, on the, on the phone, on the show before <laughs> I was in high school and one of my best friends, he was dating a girl named Christine and she was 16 at the time. And I told him <laughs> that is so fucking cool. And he goes, why? I'm like, you just don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> So no, Christine 16. Great story. It yeah. is. Ken? <laughs> yeah. So Christine 16 oh. is a written in third person, I believe, right? A song kind of like Plaster Caster was written in third you know, person. Uh that's why it wasn't it wasn't uh, Mark, it wasn't him saying I, I got the plaster caster but he always explained that but anyway um for christine 16 that was my one of my first favorite songs uh when i was first getting into kiss i still i still enjoy it um I, the other song um legend tonight is feels unfinished feels like a demo to me um so i, I would it's a good song but it feels unfinished so christine 16 even with the piano but Ken, it's not in yeah. third. It's not in the third person. person. It is. He, he no, didn't I, sit I, out. I don't, I don't believe that. He didn't listen, sit listen, outside listen, of school listen. waiting for Ken, some girls Ken, to come to out. Me. Of, listen, of listen to me. I don't. You don't know that. Person is like a... I I don't usually say things like this to girls your age. She drives me crazy. It's still in third person. Yeah. No, it's That's not, not it's third person. person. He's writing about somebody else. No, no, no. no, Ken, no. Ken, no. Ken needs to go back to seventh grade English class. That is totally exactly. the first person. <laughs> <laughs> You've given me time to think about my choices. This it's time fiction. fiction. Christine 16 is a great song that is a core part of the Kiss catalog. Revisionism and modern, you know, mores be damned. But... When I got Kiss Killers and put on that cassette in my fandom and I'm a Legend Tonight came on and I knew nothing about the band, I was blown away by that song and I still get those feelings to this day when I hear I'm a Legend Tonight. And I'm going with that song simply for that reason and not for any revisionist political bullshit um, and not to simply pick classic Kiss over... A Paul Stanley emergency throwaway track because of what that song meant to me from that day to this day. Thank you. Bye bye, Christine. <laughs> Fair. 
Yeah. Well, again, I I I saw all the people in the chat basically went with you know Christine sixteen, and I could very easily have just gone the political line because it's a classic Kiss song, but no, sorry. I'll save that for some other song that needs rescuing. I'm not Christine. That's not a sword. I'm not dying on a sword for Christine sixteen. Mm. <laughs> oh fuck, deuce. <laughs> Oh no. The studio version. Is it? Yeah. Well, it's, this is our it's, studio it's, album yeah. Deathmatch, right? Uh-oh. Yep. Uh oh. It's still Deuce. Deuce is Deuce. Well, it's okay. This, right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Journey of a Thousand Years versus Deuce. Oh. <laughs> do we Mark? have to do this? Do, well, um, he's, he's going to find a way to fuck this oh, up. Come on, Mark. Tell us, tell us why Journey smile. of a Thousand Years. <laughs> He'll find well, a way Journey to of a Thousand Bob Years is probably <laughs> one, of, one, of the, one of the best songs on that album, hands Not down. <laughs> yep. It is probably Gene's masterpiece on that record because Gene really dropped the ball on that record as far as the other songs. There are just some terrible songs on there. We Are One, oh, God. H- horrendous songs on that album. Uh, but Deuce... Um, being that it's one of those songs that they've opened so many tours with, and you know, it, it's so embedded in a person, a Kiss fan's, you know, mind. I mean, a live one, you know, is such a classic Studio record, books. and it and it's start- yes, and I know. And while I'm getting to that, Daniel, I'm getting to that, yeah. and while it's so fantastic on the live version of it the the studio version of it was always kind of weak i found yes ab i won't disappoint you because i think the studio version of this is really weak i mean i've always said before that they should have kept kramer and his outlook and how he did their stuff when they did the the, the, they did the early demos with them because all the stuff that he did with them back then was really good you know imagine what it would have been like the first record if he did that you know, and while I don't say much good things about Gene Simmons songs in general, uh, I got to say Journey of a Thousand Years sounds good. It's written good. It's performed well. And while I know I'm going to get a strike from Julian, he's going to be very bitter at me for saying this. I'm going to have to go with a Journey of a Thousand Years over it because I think Daniel made a very important point here. We are talking about studio album deathmatch, not live album deathmatch. Here. If we were talking about the live album version, I think I would have probably changed my view on it. Well, hmm. one person, one vote. Daniel. <laughs> Journey of a Thousand Years is Gene's best thing from, from Psycho Circus. And maybe from the three, fi- one of his best songs from, from the three final Kiss albums. However, um, even though I don't like the studio version at all when it comes to do compared to the live versions, of course, uh, they are 10 out of 10. The studio version, I don't know. The main problem is the riff doesn't sound like it sounds live. It sounds a bit off. I, I never liked the, the, the riff, how it sounded on the studio album. But I, I I don't have the balls that Mark has. I, I can't go with. I can't believe, you know, I can't believe you're throwing me under the bus here, Daniel. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that, Mark. But I, I do see your point there. But, but I can't I can't go against Deuce. You know, a Psycho Circus song against first album. I, I, the first album. <laughs> I, I can't do it, so I have to go. Deuce. And meanwhile, he's going to be in my ear. Don't forget it's studio album. Don't forget it's studio <laughs> album. Yeah, so you can always you can always say, "Oh, fine." The double platinum version fixed a lot of the issues on the first. True. Thank you. Thank you, Blondie. Come on, it's Deuce. I mean, I, I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to sit. I'm not going to sit here and sing "Journey of a Thousand Years" as praises. It's a fine song, but if we're talking about it going up against Deuce, which is one of the best Kiss songs ever. A Kiss song that could be in the finals when we finally get there. So. Um, <laughs> well, we all have opinions, so <laughs> it's 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 a hundred percent deuce for me. That's not even a debate. 
Ken, which one of these songs did they perform last night? Uh, Deuce? <laughs> nope, neither. Oh, did they not? No, no. De Deuce was left out of the set because they played the shortened set last night. I didn't see the they set list last night. Okay. All right. Come uh, on, so, so, Ken. I didn't see it. <laughs> Team Gene, Deuce versus Journey. <clears throat> yeah, I, you know, I love Journey of a Thousand Years. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> And I, I don't know why we keep going Gene against Gene in here. It's very tough to, <laughs> to pick a song. But, uh, yeah, Deuce is such a classic song. Even on the first album, yeah, the production is not the greatest, but it's no, still no. a great song on that album. Uh, one of the best songs on that album. I think Black Diamond is the best song on the album, but uh, Deuce is a you know, shirt right behind it. Yeah. So for me, again, first Kiss song I ever heard was either Deuce or Black Diamond. I think it's probably Deuce. It is my song. It is the song I need to hear live in concert. The first time I ever heard that song was not the live version. So it was either Double Platinum or um, or what's it? Uh, debut. So Deuce. Duh. All right, Deuce. Go through Journey. But Journey is really good. Crispiness. Thank yeah. you for the comment. That's a, that's a, a great observation as well. It's a great uh, song. It does need another better. verse, though. Needs needs another verse. Always thought that. Yep. All right. So next up, can we have a break from Gene songs? <laughs> yeah. Let's get rid of shock some Paul me. songs. How about some Ace songs? Shock me. Oh, shock who? Against. Uh -huh. Right. Modern uh -huh. day Delilah. Mm hmm. That's a cool matchup. Well, because it's going to kill that song more than likely. Um, we are starting with Ken on this one. Yeah, I like Modern Day Delight a lot. Of course, I would say this. You know, it's like, I like the other song a lot, but then uh, yeah, I got to pick Shock Me. Great first song from uh, where, you know, vocals from Ace. Mm -hmm. Great, great guitar solo. Great riff. Great drumming. The, the whole thing is it's just a classic song. Um, from the period. Of course, live is better than uh, studio, but still, the studio is great. It really stands out as far as the, uh, the, the drumming that was going on by Peter Chris on that one. So, shock me. Lonnie? Um, kind of, kind of echo what Ken said. You know, I really like Modern Day Delilah. I really, really enjoyed it when it you know, when it came out, it was so refreshing and so great to hear yeah. new Kiss music at the time. And it is a good song. I really like it. But I can't I can't pick it over Shock Me. Shock Me is too good. It's it's just Ace. It is very, very pinnacle at his best. Um it you know, another matchup I would probably put Modern Day Delilah through, but Shock Me is too good. I, I have to pick it. Mark. Um <clears throat> Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, Shock Me is one of those songs that I think really stands out on Love Gun. I think it's one of those songs that Eddie Kramer did a little extra bit of magic on. I mean, if you listen to some of the other songs in there, it's, it's good overall, but I always get the feeling that Eddie worked more on, like, Aces stuff and the song that Peter was involved in. And I think Paul and Gene had a little bit more control over their songs on that album compared to the album before. Uh but I, I really I really like Shock Me. I think Peter does some great drumming on that. And uh, Modern Day Delilah is good, but I, I don't think that it's it's anywhere near the quality, in my opinion, of Shock Me. Hmm. Daniel. Shock Me is a great song. My favorite part of it is, is, is actually the drumming part. I, I love how Peter plays the drums on that one. Uh, Modern Day Delilah. I remember being so pleasantly surprised when I heard it the first time. And also when they performed it, I don't know if it was on Jay Leno, or David Letterman, some of the mm -hmm. shows, and it sounded great. And back then they didn't use tapes. So uh, <laughs> it sounded great. And I remember, exactly. I rem you know, I brought my kids to the last two concerts here in Sweden. And, and I remember back then I, I, tape that um, video from if it was Letterman or Leno and show them because I was so proud of the band. I, th I thought they looked kind of cool and sounded great. And of course you can hear some Deep Purple or, or uh, All American Man or, or a bit of, you know, he used 
he, he mimicked some some of the stuff he, he heard but i do feel that's probably the my favorite song off of the two last albums they did and uh, so, so so i'll go modern day delilah just for the heck of it so it gets at least one more because as i think it's such a a great um it was a, such a surprise you know after psycho circus hearing that they could still bring it so i think it was like their sort of their last hooray uh great song and they felt like they were back and they were a real band once again great riff but yeah. shock me shock me you know i often bag on love gun because of the production i call it like the crazy nights of the originals albums that's just got a little bit too much polish going on that takes an edge off it but the production on shock me works beautifully for how it makes that song sound on it so i mean it, it was always going to be ace for me as much as i love modern day delilah and i echo a lot of the things daniel said all right shock me goes through the world is good Next up, all the way. Mm. It's, all, it's all the way mm. going all the way. No. Or is it going to come up against something stupid? <laughs> <laughs> Naked city. Ooh. Wow. All the way versus Naked city. Lonnie, Lonnie, Lonnie gets to go first. <laughs> Again. Um, Naked city's good. I like it. But I like All The Way better. I really, I think it's underrated song. Um, it's a fun song that, that's kind of, you know, on the second side of Hotter Than Hell. And I, I like it better. I like, I like, uh, I like Gene's vocals in it. I, uh, I think the song's fun. They're still young. They're still just kind of hungry. Um, and I know you guys like Naked City a whole lot and it's a good song. But um, for me, it's All The Way. Okay. That's what it's about. Daniel. All the way is to me a throwaway on Hot Than Hell. I, I never wow. liked it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but if you compare it to the other songs, who the hell would put Jeez. All the Way like a single or something? It's it's nowhere near the quality of Harder Than Hell or, or some of the other great songs on that one. So, on the other hand, you have uh, Naked City, beautiful lyric, uh, perfectly performed by Gene. You know. He does some of his best singing on that song. Uh, uh, Unmasked is not, not one of my favorite albums, but I do feel this song is uh, really a cool tale of being in New York, being Gene in New York, you know. Uh, even though he rips off the title of some old movie, as he does uh, a lot of times. Um, I do feel I get a vibe from Naked City. I don't get it from the other song. I, I never really liked that other one. So I go with Naked City. Naked City. All right. Mark. Um, Naked City is one of those songs that I really loved when I first heard Unmasked. I thought that it stood out right away. For one of the reasons was because I thought Gene's bass guitar sounds really good in that song. That that bass sound is really growly, crunchy. And, and then if you notice... Whenever it seems like Gene really likes the song, his bass comes up in the mix. It happens on Creatures of the Night songs. It happens on on Mass songs. Anytime he's he's a believer of a song of his, then he just moves that fader up just a little bit higher on his bass guitar in the mix. And I agree with with Daniel. I think that the vibe of it is good too. Lyrically, it it's good. Uh, and you know, even though it was written by a bunch of people, I still think it has a really good Kiss vibe to it. And I overall, I've I've always I, and I'm kind of with Lonnie. I like all the way as well. I think I was one of the people that voted for it with him when we put that song through. Uh, I always thought that it was a, a very cool, catchy song all the way. Uh, but I, I I've I don't know. I, I've always kind of had a soft spot for Unmasked uh, of late, and even a while back, it's always been kind of a important album for me so i i think that i'm gonna go for uh uh you know naked city all right ken <laughs> hey uh, two gene songs anyway uh yeah, i i have to go with all the way i mean i, I do think naked city is the best song <clears throat> best or second best song on 
on uh, Unmasked, but it it gets dinged for me for production, you know, and that sort of thing. <laughs> Even though it's great, great vocal uh, it's by Gene, hell production. and enjoy the heck out of it. Um, and uh, probably only two parts of Kiss <laughs> playing on it. Um, so uh, yeah, all the way. I, I I really really enjoy that song, the riff in it, and uh, just the just the classic grungy sound of that from uh, Hotter Than Hell. This sucks. That means I have to do a tiebreaker here, which... Um... Julia, I need, I need some statistics. I don't know how many times, times have Ken voted for the newer song <laughs> off of two songs. I think it's zero. Probably. <laughs> but I guess newer it, song. It, when, you, when you're there in 77... You yeah, know. he's an old old fan, you know. He's been there. It, it, it colors your opinion in, in yeah, what can only be. <laughs> it's like our we're the eighties guys. You know? Bill Phelps has a good comment here before I break the tie that it doesn't sound as muddy as the rest of the album, or that the production suits that song perfectly. I think it's I more can, of that. Yeah, I can I can never get away from hearing it live in sure. concert in 2004 mm -hmm. and I was excited jumping up and down and the rest of the audience was sitting on their hands going <laughs> what is what? this what thing? um and I'm not well, saying that they wouldn't do that for naked, yeah I'm not saying they wouldn't do that for Naked City as well but Naked City is a spectacular vocal beyond yeah, totally any doubt it's a very vivid song that is so New York. I don't care if Bob Kulik and Pepe Castro had a lot to do with that song before it came to Gene and he just co-opted it. Um, that doesn't matter to me at all. Naked City. I, I'm going unmasked song here over all the way. Again, these are tough matchups. I'm going with the song Very that makes tough. me smile and there's no debate that it's the studio version that we're talking about here. So Naked City, next round. Oh, good. That's a bit yeah. of a surprise. Why? <laughs> oh, now it gets. Going. Now things get rough. I still love you. Versus. All for the love of rock and roll. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Well, and I get well, and I get to go first. I still love you. Versus sappy, all for the love. Sappy ballad. Okay. I That's still a... love you for me. I love that song. I, I love listening to the MTV stuff where he's absolutely, you know, just enjoying passionately performing that song. Um, yeah. Listening to the cuts on the Creatures box set now, which are studio. Again, first time I ever heard it. Lonnie? Um, All for the Love of Rock and Roll is one of the better songs off of Monster. But I Still Love You is so good um that all for love of rock and roll even though it's one of the better songs off that album does not compare i still love you is fantastic so it's an easy pick for me as well mark um i'm gonna go with my with my gut on this and my what but kind of like what julian always says what a song that makes you smaller and a song that makes you you know have a special connection with you the very first time i heard creatures of the night I thought that that whole album had a very cool vibe to it, beginning to end. I always thought that even though that was a ballad, you know, when you you know when you listen to it, you're like, oh boy, here we go with Paul singing, you know, the love song. Th this to me is one of those songs I could almost put in the bracket of the perfect power ballad. Almost, it's it's so well written. It's even though it's a ballad, it, it does, never comes across to me as sappy, kind of like how da Daniel says. Lyrically, maybe it is sappy, but the sound, that whole sound of the guitar and that whole vibe of the drums that are so huge still, and the whole the reverb encasing the whole sound of that song gives it still that kind of cool, you know, creatures of the night feel to it still. That even though I love, you know, Eric and the way he sings. You know the song that you know. I I still have to say that I still love you connects more with me still, and I've always loved Creatures of the Night sonically, songwriting wise. So to me, it's gonna have to be I still love you. 
Daniel. I love both songs, uh, but I don't go and listen to I Still Love You a whole lot. I, I think it's it's a long song, it's slow, but you can't deny the vocals. And you guys didn't mention it, but the solo on the song is one of the greatest solos on Creatures in my mind. I don't remember who did it, but uh, any one of you who remember who did the solo on I Still Love Ferris, You? It's Ferris, isn't it? Uh, maybe it is, uh, but but that's just a great solo. And then we, I know we just do in studio albums now, but you can't deny the power of the song, on the, you know the convention tour and on, on the unplugged yeah. album. You know the vocals. It's pretty much maybe Paul's best ever. I don't know. Uh, the performance on the unplugged version. You know he really nailed it. And I do enjoy the Eric Singer song. I think that's one of my favorites off of the later albums, but I can't go against As You Love You, even though it's a ballad, even though it's kind of long. There's so many great stuff in there. It's almost like Kisses, um, you know, nothing else matters, so to speak. You know. No, yeah, good point. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's sort of Kisses, nothing else matters. I, th I think it's a, it's a huge ballad, great song, and you can hear that <laughs> Paul isn't very happy in that song. He, uh, he, he lost out on some great love there. I never yeah. thought of that, Daniel. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. nice. Ken, your vote is meaningless. I know it's meaningless anyway, um, but I'll have to go with I Still Love You, um, even though it's it's kind of, for me, it's always been one of my, one of my least favorite songs off of Creatures. Uh, kind of stops the momentum of that album for me. Um, Some hard competition. It's, it's still a good, you know, still a great song. Otherwise, um, I'll go with that one. All right. I still love you guys there. We, we've got a, a, a shitload of songs to get through. So I'm just going to do a, a couple more rounds uh, cool. this episode, if you guys are cool with that. And I like Crispiness is... Uh, Sure, it's a pleading, defeated lyric, but the delivery has titanium balls. That's very nice. All right, next up is two songs from Asylum going head to oh, head. Lord. Oh, and boy. Ken is going to flip that it's secretly cruel versus loves a deadly weapon. So, Daniel, get us started with that. Secretly cruel versus <laughs> loves a deadly weapon. I have to God. try to remember. Yeah. See, dude. So uh, it's a tie. <laughs> Wait a minute. That's a Ken line. Wait a minute. A line. I can only say that. Hold it. Uh, okay. Oh, my Lord. I think I love both songs. In fact, mm, I did some prepping for an episode that we're going to do, hopefully in the future, where we're listing our favorite 80s riffs. And both these songs are on my top five list. So, uh, oh, Secretly Cruel. I'll have to go Secretly Cruel anyway. I, I love that riff. Uh, and we, I know we're all influenced by that version that some guy did like 20 Double years ago. ago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've mentioned him all over, uh, over and over again. But, but, but that kind of opened your eyes to the <laughs> 70s feel of, of, of that song. I do like the other one as well, but Secretly <laughs> Yeah, I, I got to go to Mark next on this since, you know, this is the Asylum crew, I think, only rightfully gets to vote first on this. Um, yeah, I mean, as it's well known, Asylum is my favorite unmasked Kiss album ever. I, I love that record top to bottom. Um, and while these two songs are my least favorite on the record, it's still, though, great. I'll put them over most any other Kiss songs from the Unmasked period. I love it. I love that album. Um, it's it's interesting when I was thinking about which one I would pick on this one, but I think it's going to be for me. I'm going to go with Secretly Cruel for for one reason. I, I'm I've always loved the original version of Love's a Deadly Weapon that was put on the Creatures box set there, and when I heard the version on Asylum. I was kind of disappointed. I didn't like the way they kind of kicked it up into this fast double be double bass version of it. I thought it was much much more groovier in its original form, and I liked the vibe of it much more in its original form. So 
uh, Secretly Cruel has always been kind of a cool song. And you know, yeah, Double Virgo, he's shown us how it could be if it was a 70s version of the song. But I love the 80s version of it, and I'm going to go with Secretly Cruel. Okay, I'm going next. And I agree with Mark because, and it's it's also been said, uh, again, crispiness with a very astute comment. Secretly Cruel is fun, but Love's a Deadly Weapon is a reminder of what could have been. But I didn't know that in 1985, but I always liked Secretly Cruel. Um, you know, now we know that Love's a Deadly Weapon is a collision of Elder with Wendy Williams' band, basically. It's uh, the song Party combined with Love's a Deadly uh, or Deadly Weapons. But Secretly Cruel is really fun. And it was fun before Double Virgo ever came onto the scene for me. So Secretly Cruel. Uh, Ken. Yeah, a little deadly weapon. Uh, it's kind of cool, but the thing is, the yeah, you know, the original way they should have done it, deadly weapons or whatever, uh, made more sense. Um, I think when they did it on Asylum, it was it was a, another instance of Kiss chasing the hyperdrive kind of pace of a mm -hmm. song, speed of the time uh, that was going on, just trying to like show they can do it along with the other bands that are doing that type of uh fast-paced you know uh, music so but uh yeah secretly cruel is always kind of stuck out to me as a, a really good song from asylum especially when i first got it that kind of stuck out even from the beginning all right yeah. lonnie um i'm gonna go against the grain and i'm gonna say the loads of deadly weapon i like whoa I, yeah it's, sorry it's a good song it's a i good um song. secretly cruel is good but i and i do like the demo of loves a deadly weapon just as much as you guys do but i still think what ended up on asylum with loves a deadly weapon is trump's what uh it's trump secretly cruel sorry it's it's a good song but i'm gonna i'm gonna i my vote doesn't matter, but I'm still going to give it a little love. No. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun okay. riff, you know, that song. <laughs> okay. I, I look forward to that episode if I can ever get enough practice time. All right, next up is uh, Beth. Versus. Oh, man. Get that shit out of here. Come on and God love me. Damn it. Oh. <laughs> That's Can, the end of Beth. Can't get us started there. Beth or come on and love me. <laughs> I, you know what? No, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, yeah, come on and love me. I'll have to pick that. Uh, even though Beth wasn't so important as far as uh, getting a hit, you know, for Kiss. Um, Come on, love me. It's such a better song. Skim baddy. Great pop song. So go and do go and come do on and love me. All right, Lonnie. <clears throat> it's come. It, that's easy. It's I love come on and love me. It's, it's his favorite my, song. It is my favorite kiss yeah. song. Come on and love me. It's no brainer at all. Not even close. <clears throat> Mark. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even good. <laughs> Do you really even need to ask me this Come question? On, Bob tell, Ezrin produced that one. Because... Tell us how bad Bob Ezrin is. Okay, Pick him so on and love me and let's you, you, you hate it live, but you love the studio version. You love the studio. But let's just put it this way. You ruined Beth. Come on and love come on and love me is a great song. I really I really love that song. I've always loved it as well. Uh and Dress to Kill is a, a really great album of the three first yeah. records. I think that Dress to Kill is the standout for sure on Ozzy's three as for, sonically for sure. Song, yeah. Yes, yeah. songwriting wise, maybe not the first album has that going for it. But but again, when you listen to Beth on Destroyer, the, the, the fact that there's not even a single instance of acoustic guitar on this version, like on this on the album, is just mm -hmm. completely makes me just want to vomit in my mouth. Okay. Because that song was written on acoustic guitar. Okay, that whole song was based around that version of it. And that just shows why Bob Ezrin plus Kiss equals shit. And because he takes the heart of the song. Just say, okay. come on and love me. Come oh, on. come on. <laughs> he takes the heart of the song, okay, and 
he hey. takes what what the the essence of it removes it and puts what he thinks is the most important part of it in there a symphony orchestra of all things yeah. he puts in there and it's just like when he puts his god awful piano parts on the kiss songs you just want to go in there and slap them upside the head okay the destroyer is the record that should be put in the delete bin every single time. If you see it, people out in the in the records used stores, just buy it and break it and destroy it. It's the worst record you'll ever listen to. We get it. You're not exactly <laughs> singing the praises of "Come On and Love Me." I mean, come on, no. it's you're making it sound like it's just getting yeah. through by default. Yeah. No, I thought it's a good song. I, I love "Come On and Love Me." So you so you like Beth, right? Now Beth is crap. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, Daniel. I think uh, Ken nailed it. Beth was important, but it's nowhere near the top Kiss songs. Come on, a lovely, come on and love me. Like like yeah. Lana said, is is one of his favorite songs. And I, I'd say most of Paul's songs of "Dress to Kill" are favorites of mine excellent yeah I, I love all of his stuff on that album rock bottom you know are you kidding me such a great song uh anyway um anything for my baby i love that one and and the rest of them as well so i think that's a really strong room album for Paul. yeah room service as well it's a great song unfortunately a lot of the songs from that album that paul wrote never got the chance live uh, i think they could have worked out real well yeah uh, but uh, come on love me they played occasionally uh, way too too few times you know they could have used it i, I remember seeing uh, it live in 97 they added it for the second show in stockholm and it was a, such a great addition but then they dropped it and and they didn't play it a lot on on the reunion uh, tour unfortunately but i'm all in with lonnie i think it's one of their better songs ever and beth is just you know it was important but it's not kiss to me i had to address a b here uh, with the, again with the piano bit here now i have nothing against <laughs> piano okay I hate pianos but i love piano but i hate it when bob because Ezrin it's got the same number of letters kiss. as ezrin <laughs> <laughs> But see, I don't like it when he when he throws it into a Kiss stuff. I, it's you know with Floyd and with Cooper and all this stuff. Piano, it's it's it it fits well in there, but not with Kiss. Piano should be nowhere near Kiss. Okay, thank you for your extended monologue. Um, <laughs> come 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 on and love me because this is about our you know death match and favorites. And I, I Beth is important it's probably one yeah. of the most important uh songs in the kiss catalog but that's not what this is about and the first time i heard come on and love me again it, it hooked me it made me a fan of this band so next up i confess versus flaming youth lonnie get us started there um but it Mm. It doesn't hold a candle to Flaming Youth, though. Flaming Youth is great. It's about it's Flaming Youth is like it's 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 Kiss, you know, doing what you want, and it's like the message of the classic Kiss songs, um, and it's really good. So and and it's off a Destroyer, so I have to pick it. Uh, <laughs> Just to spite Mark, you know, Mark, Mark, and I, I, I can't wait, I can't wait to hear Mark tell tell how. <laughs> crappy flaming youth is and how about because of the piano it. yeah and, and i hear a hint of piano in the background so um but i'm oh wait no it'll be the it'll be the calliope that's yeah. the problem this so, time well Mark, oh, we, yeah. we, i haven't i i haven't heard calliope. enough how much bob ezrin ruined shit today so i <laughs> well let, let's more. go directly to mark so that we can continue his conversation mark i confess or flaming youth and think that this this is this is really painful. It really is oh, no. because because <laughs> I want to with all my heart go with I confess, just because Flaming Youth is on that god awful album, okay. And yes, the Calliope is shit. I don't know what what was he thinking putting that on there again. But you know, I'm not surprised that they said Bob Ezrin was heavily into drugs at that period. It shows with some of the choices he made on this record, because it's just absolute nonsense that this is, you know, that he done in this these songs. Just complete crap. I mean, bells too. I'm like, do you love me? Come on, give me a break. Uh, so I want to go with I confess, but I can't do it. I confess is terrible. 
Okay, not a good song at all. And while Flaming Youth is not a good song either, because of the fact that it has an odd time signature in there, I'm gonna with a heavy heart go with that because at least it has a an element of prog in it. So yes, it's in seven eighth, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So I'm gonna go with oh. Flaming Youth, much to your surprise. Wow. Mark has chosen Destroyer. Daniel. As a skin name, and I have to Google some words you're saying. So I just found out what, what STD means. So that was pretty pretty, <laughs> <laughs> pretty interesting. But but uh but when it comes to uh, when it comes to this matchup, I have to go destroy all the way. You know, I confess it's a I don't think it's an awful song, but but it's one of the weaker songs off of that album in my mind yes. and uh, flaming youth is pretty cool song you know kind of fun lyrics and uh, they tried it a, a few times live yeah i do understand like 99 percent, but that one i didn't get so i had to <laughs> i had to you know i learn i like learning i'm a teacher i yes. like learning words so that's another one to add yeah scd yeah uh, i'll try that on sm whatever it was. <laughs> i've already forgotten okay but uh, uh, flaming youth, Ken STD, yeah, <laughs> uh, flaming youth for me, even though it's not one of my favorites off of Destroyer. Um, it's it's better than I confess. I confess, is I enjoy that one, but uh, it's it's yeah, it, it's not, it doesn't hold a candle to flaming youth. Yeah, um, Flaming Youth. I always love it. It's an anthem. Uh, I confess, is actually a great Gene Simmons vocal in the yep. chorus. Um, mm -hmm. I, I yeah. like his voice. I like just how where he's singing from on it. But come on, Flaming Youth is just you know classic kiss. Um, and I confess, is not going to make too many of my lists. Yeah, unless it's the best Gene songs on Carnival of Souls. All right, we, let's do two more rounds so we all get equal number of picks. I stole your love. Ooh. Going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you sure? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. Oh, shit. Long way down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I stole your love. Julius' um, fa favorite off of the Larry albums. Yeah. It, it is, actually. Yeah, um, I know, I know. Mark, Mark, get us started on there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I stole your love. I mean, it's always been one of my favorite songs from kiss period i mean i've always loved that riff and when we did that uh po po podcast me and daniel did that one of the ones i played on yeah. that's one of my selections i really love that song so uh cool. in in c sharp you know one of the rare times paul stanley busts out that you know opening chord in a song so i mean he also does it for it's come on and love me too but it's very rare that he does a song in the starting with that uh chord there so i, I love that song all right lonnie yeah, I mean, are we really doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's I saw your, Long Way Down is one of the better songs off of those later albums, but I Saw Your Love so freaking good. Um, I mean, it's Kiss at their height. It's so great. The riff is so great. Paul's vocals are so great. It's under, again, like Come On and Love Me is a very underplayed classic Kiss song. Ken? <laughs> Yeah, Long Way Down was a, it's a good, really good song that's kind of a tribute in, in, to, you know, Led Zeppelin style uh, music. Uh, so, but, yeah, I Still Your Love is one of the greater, lead, you know, greatest lead off, you know, songs on any album uh, that they put out. So that wins. Yep, Daniel. Yeah, no, getting to know how Paul Stanley works, you know. I always thought that uh, "Long Way Down" song was was kind of a song about Peter and Ace from Paul. Mm. You know, it's a long mm. way down when you fall from the top. I, I wouldn't right. be surprised if he wrote it about Peter and Ace. You know, sometimes it can be it can be that way. Uh, it's a good song, but I guess I stole your love. I mean, I stole your love might be in the top ten. You know, top five. Uh, the first time I actually really got into I Stole Your Love was 
getting some bootleg concerts in the early 90s, you know, that uh, on the Shade Tour Detroit, the two nights from Detroit, when they opened up with that song. That was actually the first time, it might have been somewhere around 91, 92, when I got those tapes. I mean, I was blown away. And then I went back and listened to the Love Gun album, and it's a good version on, on the album as well. So that's the one going through. Yeah, I'm not even justifying this with an explanation. I stole your love. Last round um, mm -hmm. is going to be ooh, trial by fire versus what Good makes song. the world what makes the world go round, mm -hmm. um, and that's a, a, a pretty tricky one. I'm yeah. going what makes the nah. world go round because I always enjoyed that as a rocker on the Unmasked album, um, whereas <laughs> trial by fire is in kind of the bottom part of what I enjoy on Asylum. So I'm going unmasked. Uh, Lonnie. Uh, Shadow, what do you think? Um, trial. Yeah, I'm going to go Trial by Fire. I, I, I'm i not a huge fan of either one of the songs, honestly. But I think Trial by Fire has a little more of a kiss feel to it. Um, you know, just kind of like more of a classic kiss feel to it really um gotta live my life oh yeah type thing so um i'm gonna go trial by fire all right daniel trial by fire is uh, not one of the strongest songs on asylum but but it's good enough to beat that other one uh tri <laughs> trial by yeah tri <laughs> i mean asylum is such a high quality <laughs> album you know even the the weaker songs stand out over those uh, you know albums around 80 81 beats all of them so uh trial by fire is a cool song so uh, i i know bruce wrote the riff for that one and i kind of like that that simple riff uh good song trial by fire early contributions to the band from bruce all right mark well this is this was harder than would have been expected because i love both albums quite a bit uh but being that Asylum is my favorite unmasked album, uh, even Gene's songs on this album are pretty yep. good. I mean, you know, I think this is the one record that he did kind of, you know, show his worth in the unmasked period. I mean, I think the last time he did that good a contribution was probably on Lick It Up. That was probably one of his other stronger albums that he was on. Uh, but, you know, I, I don't dislike what makes the world go around, but I just find that is one of the key songs I think would really benefit a remix of that song. I think that it, it would need a, to maybe take a little bit less of those, put less of those keyboards in there and bring up more of the guitar in it. And that song that would make it much stronger. But uh, Trial by Fire, even though it's you know a Gene song, I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Even though it's a Gene song, okay. Even though, all right. wow, Ken, that Man. must be fighting words. You get to have the last word on it. Uh, yeah, what makes the world go round? I, I do not like the chorus. It's 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 not good. It really isn't. It's one of Paul's not um, so good. What makes the world go round? Go round. Do, do, do. It just goes and doesn't do anything for me. Um, uh, it goes no. around. Uh, yeah, he goes like around around too much. That's the problem. Um, right, right. Try, yeah, trial by fire. I always like that. I like the message of it. Um, Geneisms in it, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, it's a better song. So I'll go with trial by fire. All right. There we go. Trial by fire goes goes through. You all are Gene Simmons, Ken Sycophants on this round, obviously. Um, what? <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're, you're just making up for all those horrendous matchups earlier, Ken. Just admit it. Yeah, Gene against Gene, eliminating a bunch of Gene's mm -hmm. books. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's 30 songs uh, taken care of for the death match. Uh, you know, we're we're coming up to 90 minutes, so that's plenty for a podcast. Um, yeah. You know, I want to thank everyone who's taken the opportunity to chime in with comments and observation. Crispiness, you win an award today for your observations and. Let's just go back to that really nice comment about Paul's delivery on the verses of I Still Love You. Yeah, spectacular. 
Paul Stanley will always have those albums to go back to and listen whenever we have the desire, even after these bands head off the road. Aerosmith kicks off their Peace Out tour tonight, so it's like double duty for sadness for me uh, watching the end. Black Rose announced that they've got a four, what is it, four disc Southern Harmony mm -hmm. musical companion box set coming out Ooh. with demos and outtakes I'll be getting and, that. A live, and a live show from that tour as well. So there is mm. you know, some cool new music coming from some bands even if not much seems to be happening with the band that we're all here for but you know i want to take everyone um take the take the opportunity to thank everyone for joining us today but for now um from daniel from mark bob Ezrin, the piano lonnie and ken we'll see you next time thank you for spending time listening to the kiss faq podcast today all sales are final, there are no refunds. If you'd like, look us up on Facebook or come over to the KISS FAQ message board and discuss the topic we've broadcast today. Don't forget to rate us on iTunes, Spreaker, or wherever you've listened to the show. We hope you'll join us again.